Okay, I've improved the contrast quite a lot, but now the overall color balance is looking all wrong. It's looking very greenish and what have you. So now I'm going to come down to where it says color balance and drop that in. Let's pull this over here and see what we can do with this. Okay, so you've got shadows, midtones, highlights, and these sliders affect the color balance. Let's go to midtones. As a general rule of thumb, start with the midtones first and then adjust from there. So this will, it's too much cyan in there, I think. Now if I'm moving it, I've moved it by 10% and already I'm getting a much better result. And let's take a look. Too much blue. Let's try moving that a little bit. Maybe should make it a little bit warmer with magenta. Then I'm going to come to my shadows. Okay, that definitely, there's way too much cyan in there. Move that around there. Too much green, I think. I'm only moving these by very small amounts. That's all I need to do. Anything more, you're going to end up with some really strange results. Let's try it. Look, whoa, bright pink baby. Yuck, not very nice. So very small amounts. Let's try the highlights. It's looking rather yellowish there. Let's try a bit of blue on the highlights. I don't like the cyan. Come back to the midtones. Don't be afraid to keep chopping and changing with this, seeing what you can do. Shadows. There. That's getting where I want to go. I'm concentrating on the skin of the baby, but I'm also taking a look at the white sheet they're lying on. Right, we'll go to about there. You may not think I've made much of a difference. Let's compare what I've done with the original. So I'm going to come up to my layers, come to the fix folder, and if I tick on it, I'll make it invisible. And let's call up our background layer, make that visible. That's the original. That's how adjusted. You can see it's looking a lot better. Okay, well, I've done the base. Now I want to compare it with auto as well, finally. That was auto. That's what we've done using levels first, then color balance. I had more control over it. I was able to push it more where I wanted it to go. Now, while I'm here, I'm going to take the background layer. I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to put it inside my fix folder. OK, I'm not going to bother with rotating it all over again, but I'm going to call this one Curves. And now I'm going to get from the color adjustments, I'm going to get Curves and put it in there. And oh, what have we got here? A lot of people who do this for a living, they all swear by curves. They say curves, you've got to use them. They're the best. They are the most powerful thing you've got, but they're not that easy to get to grips with. So I'm going to show you how to use them. You decide whether you want to use them or not. OK, so I've got my graph here. As you can see, there's no light pixels here. OK, so it's looking rather dark. There's also not that very many black pixels as well. So I can make this do what I did with the levels dialog. I can take this point here and I can pull it along to here. And I can also take the top part and pull that along. And you can see what's happening. I'm getting more contrast. That's one rule of this. The steeper this line is, the more of a contrast you're going to get between that point and that point. And then I can always put an extra dot in the middle, around the middle. And if I push it up, I'm going to make the overall picture brighter. But there's more to it than that. OK, so if I take this off to the side, it goes completely. I'm going to take this back to where it was. We'll just press this little button here. I'm going to put one point there and an extra point here. I'm going to pull it down here and pull this one up here. You see that S shape I'm getting on on this curve there? That is the classic shape you get when you're wanting to increase the contrast of a picture. And look, you can see there, I've got a much greater difference between dark and light. And also, as you saw, I can put in extra points. I can put in as many points as I want on here. Like, for example, here, you see this spike in the graph here? That means there's a lot of pixels around that brightness right along here. That's probably this white sheet around here. So if I put a dot there, I can probably control the brightness of that sheet without affecting the rest of the picture too much. I'm going to put another control point here. And you can see it's subtle, but I'm starting to affect 
more isolated parts of the image. Now here's one thing to watch out for. If you get your curve too extreme like this, I'm running into all kinds of problems. See this flat line there? That means all the color values between there and there are all grayed out. That you do not want at all. I'm going to get rid of that for now. The other thing you can do with this as well, I've affected all the red, green and blue values. That's what goes together to make up your pictures. But I can also just take the red line. The body is looking really quite red at the moment. I can do with it being a little bit less so. I'll do that. But also I want to up up a little bit in the shadows because there's not much red in the shadows. Take a look at the green. Yeah, there could definitely be an overall lessening of the green. Now I'm starting to get some nice stuff there. That's starting to work quite nicely. What about blue? Maybe up the blue a little bit as well. So I get a more natural tone to the white. Now be very careful with this. Move this in very small amount. If I start to move it too much, it's getting way too blue there. So move it down. Move it just slightly. Can click on OK for now. It was a summer holiday. It was very hot weather. He did have a little bit of a suntan. So it's but he's looking a little bit dark there, but I will go with that for now and I'll compare that. That's what I did with levels and color balance. This is what I've done using curves. With the curves dialog box, I did it in one go. I didn't have to first of all put levels on there and then color balance afterwards. So you can do things all in one go. You can isolate images. It's a very powerful tool, but it's quite easy to mess up a picture if you're not sure what it is you're looking for but we'll go with that for now and let's well let's compare that again with the original file there okay that was the original which by now you can really see just how much work it needed you've got a much better picture it's slow to start off with when you're figuring out how to use these things once you pick up speed with them you can make color changes and you can control it so much more than just going to auto enhance and just slapping that on your picture one final thing on this, whenever I drag one of these nice little brightly colored icons onto my picture and I make my adjustments, that's permanent unless I go to edit undo. That's why I've been duplicating the same image several times so I can compare what I've been doing. And also if I do get it wrong, well, you saw what I did. I went back to my background layer, I duplicated it and I started all over again. Remember, use layers so you can always come back to things and also try and avoid things like auto enhance, well, you can use it if you want. It might work for you. Be ready to undo that and use things like levels, color balance, curves. All right, we'll move on to some other stuff now. Okay, now I want to do a little bit more work on this. So I'm gonna to come to my curves layer and click on duplicate layer. I'm gonna call this one clone because we're going to be using the clone tool. Before I do, I want to come back to my levels. I'm not happy with the overall brightness of this. So if you come back to this and it's in a funny position like this because you've used it before, just come down to this button here. It resets the whole thing. Overall, I want this to be lighter. There's no harm in coming back and using the same tool more than once in different places. I don't want it that bright on the sheets. That's getting a little bit too blown out, I think. So I'll bring it to about there. About here, use a touch darker there. And okay, that compare it with what I've just got. Looking a bit too dark, looking a bit brighter. There are some things here that I want to correct. For example, I've got this sweat stain close to the baby's forehead, and I've also got this nappy showing or diaper. I don't really like either of them, I'd like them to go so. I come to my magnifying glass tool on the tools palette. Start clicking, 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 clicking. Getting a nice big image there. And then I want to come back to my tool palette and click on here, polygonal lasso tool. And I'm going to start making a few clicks here. Now this thing, it's probably got a lasso tool where you just draw freehand. You'll probably find it more easier and more accurate to click out an area like I'm doing. Click, 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 rather than trying to draw freehand and making a mess of it there. All right, I've got my selection there. Now I want to invert it because at the moment, if I do any changes, all the changes will be inside this area. I want to do changes outside the area here and I want to protect this part here. So. 
invert selection, invert selection. Now I'm going to come here on the tool palette to my clone stamp tool. There. Now, make sure I've got the right, make sure I've got the right tool for the job. I want to go with this one here, nice soft blurred one. And now what I have to do is I have to hold down my Alt button, click an area to define the clone source, right? So I want this part here. Click on there. And then when I come over here and I start to draw, you can see I'm brushing away that sweat stain. And at the same time, I'm not affecting the baby because of that mask I just did. What I'm doing now, I'm holding down the square bracket on my keyboard. The left square bracket, just next to the P on an Apple keyboard. And it's making it smaller. Hold down the right one, make it larger. Get used to using the keyboard commands, they will make your life so much easier. Just make sure I've got the right area. Try there. I'm just going to try just this top bit here. Now I've lost a little bit of hair, I can live with that. So, edit. Deselect all. Zoom out. So I'm holding down my Alt key, clicking. And you can see I've got rid of that sweat stain. Let's take a look at this part here. All right, we'll do the same as we did before. Go to the polygon lasso tool. And start clicking out a shape. Just come around the bottom of the leg here. Plenty of clicks, plenty of steps to do. It's about there. I'm doing this to protect the leg, remember? Come there, come there, come there. Double click to close the selection. Then invert selection. Back to the clone stamp. I want to get a fairly large area and click an area to define the clone source. Come up to here and again, as before, just start cloning it out. Make it a little bit smaller for more precise adjustments. Got Alt there. And one thing to watch out for when you're cloning, repeating areas. So try clicking on different areas and just breaking up any potential patterns you have made. All right, let's come to Edit, Deselect All. Now I'm working fast here because we've got a video and I don't want you falling asleep. So there may be other things I would do. We will cover those in later tutorials. But for now, okay, as you can see, there's no sweat stain and no diaper. I hope you got something out of this video. If you did, maybe you consider clicking on one of the links below and check out my game called Disco Baby, which is on the iTunes store or Android stores like Google Play. It has three different games in it, a memory game, a maths game for children, and a dance-along-with-me game for toddlers to join in with. Thanks for your time.